In this video, you're going to learn how to obtain full dense Jacobian matrices with the help of Jacobian vector products with the forward mode automatic differentiation in the JAX deep learning framework. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video. We will use a vector valued function f that maps from a four dimensional input x to a three dimensional output u. So if we define an evaluation point as a random collection of four numbers, I just arbitrarily selected here. So let's do genp.array of 1.0, 0.5, 1.5, and 2.0. Then we can query this function on the evaluation point. So querying it on a four dimensional vector, and this one returns a three dimensional vector. We are interested in the Jacobian of this function f. This Jacobian can also be written by df by dx. So it collects all the derivatives of the output of f with respect to the input of f. And in our case, we are using the numerator layout. So we expect it to be output of f by input of f in the shape. So the output of f is three dimensional, the input of f is four dimensional. So the shape of the Jacobian that we expect is three by four dimensional. There's a convenience function in JAX that we can use here. It's called JAX forward and it applies to the function f. And then we hand over the evaluation point. So it does a function transformation and then we query the new function. And here we return our three by four dimensional matrix. In this video, we want to look into more detail in how the check forward function works under the hood and how it is using forward mode Jacobian vector products in order to obtain this Jacobian. For this, I want to recall the notation of a Jacobian vector product. So the Jacobian vector product is basically the primitive of forward mode automatic differentiation. What it does, it computes the result of the Jacobian being multiplied or matrix multiplied with a vector from the right. So we build the Jacobian, evaluate it at a certain point, and then multiply it with something from the right. Let's define a multiplication point and again, just some arbitrarily collected numbers. And of course, we have to be careful. The shape of this multiplication point has to adhere to the number of columns and that's identical to the input of the function f. So it has to be four dimensional. So let's use 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.8. And then we can use the jax.jvp, which applies to the function f. And then we have to hand over the evaluation point in a tuple. So we'll use a tuple evaluation point, comma, and then another tuple with the multiplication point. And in the terminology of jax, that is called a primal since this is the point at which the Jacobian is evaluated. And this is called a tangent, which is the vector with which the Jacobian is multiplied from the right. Let's execute that function and it returns two objects. So first it returns the function evaluated and then it returns the result of the Jacobian vector product. Well, so far so good, but how does this Jacobian vector product now help us in order to obtain the full and dense Jacobian matrix. And for this, we will make usage of an interesting observation by using a unit vector. And here we want to define it such that it has zeros in almost any component, except for one, where it is one. So let's first create a zeros vector. And this one shall be the same as the multiplication points, which should be a four dimensional vector. I will just use a shortcut here and say four. So you see this unit vector just contains zeros. And then let's outfit the zero of entry of that vector with a one. And for this, we have to use this JAX array mutation. So we say unit vector dot add zero dot set 1.0. And of course, the reason we need to do that is because JAX does not natively do array mutation. And that's kind of a way around that. So let's look at the vector. And now we have one in the zero of component. And interestingly now, if we evaluate the Jacobian vector product, of the function f, again at the evaluation point. But now with our unit vector, what we will get is again first the evaluation of the function. This obviously hasn't changed because we used the same evaluation point. Of course, the result of the JVP changed because we use a different vector. But now it has really interesting entries because if we recall the check forward on f with the evaluation point, we see that the entries we have in the JVP result are exactly 
the zero or the very left column of our Jacobian matrix. And that of course makes sense. If you multiply any matrix with one of these unit vectors, you are extracting the column at which you have the one in the unit vector. So if we had a unit vector which had the one in the next entry, we would extract the next column. And hence, we can basically take a loop over all the possible unit vectors, extract the columns of our Jacobian matrix, and then concatenate it together. Let us implement that in a function and call this my forward Jacobian. And this one shall take a function as well as a point x. And of course, there should be a colon here. And then we first have to deduce the number of columns there are in our Jacobian. And as you see, the number of columns are exactly the shape of the input to the function. And x is the input to the function. So we will, can just say n columns is the length of the vector x. Then let's create a list and say it's the Jacobian columns. And there we want to collect all these columns together. Then we also need the unit vector. I already have that in the global scope, so I will not redefine it here. And then let's create a loop and say 4j in a range of n columns. And then we have to query our JVP. I will use a placeholder here because we are not interested in the function evaluation, but just in the column, essentially the result of the JVP. So we will do jax.jvp on the function at x, so at the evaluation point, and then at the unit vector. But wait a minute, now we're using the same unit vector for each JVP evaluation. So we would just get the very left column. We can use a functionality from JAX or from JAX NumPy, which is called role, and this role basically rolls the vector. So it moves the entries to the right by a certain offset, and here, of course, we want to do j. So if j is 0, it does not do anything. But if j is 1, it moves all the entries by 1 to the right and rolls them over back in the beginning. So we now have the 1 index at the next position. So we would now extract the next column and so on and so forth. OK, that gives us the column. Then let's append it to the Jacobian columns list and say append and then do column and that's our loop and now let's create the full Jacobian by stacking together all the columns and we can use jnp.stack for this so use all the column vectors and create a matrix out of it calling it on Jacobian columns and of course access one since we want to stack over the column dimension then let's return that Jacobian and that's our function Let's see if we did everything right. So let's query the forward Jacobian. And of course I had a typo here and apply it to the function f as well as the evaluation point. And here we go. That's our full matrix. Let's compare it with the JAX native implementation and see if we did it right. And of course, yep, this should be a function transformation. So we should be applying it to the evaluation point. Let's again bring back the function. And we see that these two are identical. And that's also, of course, to be expected because Jack forward of Jacks exactly does that under hood. There are some interesting performance considerations, especially with respect to batched evaluation. Take a look at the next video in order to get a glimpse of what you can do in order to improve the speed of the computation for the Jacobian. However, be advised that still, even if we make it faster, it still has a complexity that is linear in the number of columns. So if we had a Jacobian that is with 100 columns, so the input to the original function would be 100 dimensional, we would need 100 Jacobian vector product evaluations. And these are of course the costly parts. And of course be advised that as I mentioned in the previous video, that if you just want to compute the result of a Jacobian multiplied with a vector, you can just use the Jacobian Jacobian vector product. There is no need to compute the full and dense Jacobian. I hope that video shines some more light on the internals of some Jack's convenience function like this Jack forward. Also make sure to watch the next video in order to understand how the Jack reverse works by the help of vector Jacobian products. 
A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. If you enjoyed that video, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more content on JAX and automatic differentiation. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos. Thank you.